Uh, we are a little bit behind here, so let's get back on top, bring in our good friend, uh, Mike McAllister. Mike, before we talk SU football and basketball, you've got some uh, personal professional news to share with everyone, yes? Yes. Um, so first of all, um, side note, the first concert I ever attended live was Beach Boys, ironically. Is that right? Um, How about that? Yeah, so it's uh, State Fair, I think. Full um, circle moment for you right now. Yeah. Full circle moment indeed. Um, so the other, the professional news is that um, I am no longer with Sports Illustrated. I am now back with 24-7 Sports, which is where I was before I went to Sports Illustrated. So um, I'm returning back home, back there. But as far as everyone else is concerned, um, coverage isn't going to change. Still doing the same thing. You're still going to see me. I'm still going to yell at officials. And uh, we're still going to talk about recruits and debate over how many stars they have and why that's good or not good and all that stuff. So everything else is staying the same. All right. And and with that, uh, let's talk about some recruits. Uh, four football commits uh, have uh, been picked up by Fran Brown and the Orange since our last show. Uh, what do we need to know about these guys? Yeah, it, it was a, a busy weekend for Syracuse. They had dozens of recruits on campus uh, for unofficial visits. But um, the recruits that they landed – over the last couple of days are Marcus Upton, who is a defensive back from New Jersey. Jalen Prey, who committed this morning, is he's kind of a big athlete. He's 6'7", 265 pounds. He plays at Brunswick School um, in Connecticut. He could end up either being like a, an edge, sort of a defensive end linebacker type, or could end up being an offensive tackle. That's still kind of to be determined. Uh, but he's someone that also had a Boston College offer, and Notre Dame was looking really, really hard at as well. Uh, Jordan Gibbs, who is a defensive back from uh, Longwood High in um, – Middle Island, New York. He's a track star, so a fast, just a blazing fast uh, football player who is a little bit under the radar just because of where he plays as much as anything. But 6'2", defensive back, has some size, and again, brings a ton of speed. And then I think the most notable one is probably Byron Washington, who is um, an offensive lineman from DeSoto High in Texas. And I, I'm not lying when I tell you his measurable, six foot eight, 380 pounds. Um, he is a, a large human being. He actually went viral in December. There was a picture that was floating around of him blocking a defensive lineman from the opposing team. And obviously he looked much larger than the opposing player did as he would standing up against pretty much anyone. And people were just shocked that there was a human being that large that was at the time, um, a junior in high school. And, you know, so that kind of went viral a little bit and got him some attention, but he's, he's a good player. He's got a lot of, a lot of power, uh, power conference offers and is a, a nice win for Syracuse as, as well. So they uh, they added some talent the last few days, and I think there's still another one to come in the next 24 to 48 hours. All right. Uh, in terms of the talent that is here, uh, we've seen now uh, three spring practices uh, in the books. It's always you know hard to, to really learn anything, but um, you know we've heard from Fran Brown a couple of times, including today. We, we've gotten to, to hear from the players a little bit, Deuce Chestnut and uh, Aronde Gadsden and Kyle McCord for the first time. Anything stand out to you from the first three days of spring practice? McCord does throw a beautiful football. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I think we kind of all knew that when he committed to, to come playing here, but watching him throw a football live is, is pretty impressive. And, you know, I think, uh, it's only going to uh, exacerbate the expectations of, as, as to what he can bring to the quarterback position. That's number one. Number two, uh, I think there's a lot of energy in practice and I, I think that, you can tell they're hitting the strength conditioning program pretty hard as well. That's something that's notable. I like the fact that I saw Aronde Gadsden doing some things that a traditional tight end would do in terms of blocking and sort of getting down in a three point stance and things of that nature was, which isn't, aren't really things that we've seen him do a lot of the last couple of years. So I, that was an interesting thing to see. And then, you know, just from hearing the, the quotes from the players and the coaches, how much they talk about, 
being together and, um, you know, getting to know each other and spending time with each other off the field and all of those things. I think it was uh, Fadil Diggs that specifically mentioned any time they have a chance to eat a meal, they're trying to eat a meal with teammates and spend time together and how they're really trying to build that culture of togetherness. And I, I think it's it's an important thing, and I think that goes underrated a lot of times when you're talking about a football team and how good or not good they can be is, is how connected they are and how together they are. And you can see uh, how much of an emphasis that Fran Brown is putting on that in terms of how he's building this program. Those are kind of some of the initial takeaways uh, from the first few practices. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk some basketball. And uh, as expected, uh, you know, Justin Taylor uh, put his name in the transfer portal right away. We knew Benny Williams, same thing. Uh, you know, Quadir Copeland has been reported to be in the portal and, and nothing since then. Uh I guess bring us up to date on where you think things stand with this roster. Um, I guess let's start with, we'll, we'll put Judah aside from him for a moment. Anyone else on the roster that you expect to hit the portal? You know, there were a few that I was, I don't know about expect, but there were a few that I was keeping an eye on. You know, I was, we know that they're going to go after a guard. And so I want, I wondered would Kyle Cup look at potentially going back into the portal because he's wondering if with the guys that they're, that they're bringing in, his path to playing time might not be there. You know, does, does he decide to take a look at that? Uh, I was wondering kind of a similar thing with Peter Carey. Does he look at the fact that Syracuse is likely going to go in and get a, a, a big in the portal? He's already behind Naheem McLeod. And, um, you know, even if we think Malik Brown's future is at the four, He's already behind Malik Brown at the five as well. So he's going to be several positions, several spots behind getting significant playing time. So does he decide to look at his options or is he going to keep working and developing and, and, uh, you know, stay. So he, those were a couple that I was keeping an eye on and wondering if, if they were going to perhaps look elsewhere. I think most everyone else, you know, Monir, Monir Hema is an interesting case because I have wondered, what if he just decides, I'm taking my degree and I'm done playing basketball? He wouldn't enter the portal, but he wouldn't be on the roster next year. So I wondered if that was a possibility for him. But otherwise, I think the the main guys that we were looking at are um, in the portal or reportedly going to be in the portal because last I checked as of this morning, um, Cordier Copeland was not officially in yet, which is interesting. So, um you know, there's a lot of reasons why that could be. He could be reconsidering. He could be, um, you know, not part of the university anymore, so he doesn't need to enter the portal because he's then can just go wherever he wants. Um, you know, a lot of scenarios there. So, uh, otherwise, I think you know the the fact that we've seen Justin Taylor in is not a surprise, and um, you know we're we're looking at a couple other potential guys that could be leaving, and um, obviously, I think everyone pretty much expects that Judah won't be here one way or the other. All right, so let's bring up Judah. Um, yeah, I think we all expect he's going to at least uh, go through the process again, right? I mean, he, he went through the yeah. process last year. Why wouldn't he go through the process this year? I guess the question becomes, do you think he will enter the portal to give himself all of the options on the table? Or, you know, do you think it's do you think it's NBA and he's he's definitely going? Do you think he might go to a different school? Do you think there's any chance he comes back to Syracuse? Where do you stand with Judah? Um, I think I never say never on any scenario, but I think the chances he comes back to Syracuse are about as low as they can get without being zero. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, in the crazy world of the portal and college sports and transferring and everything else, I'll never put anything at zero because anything can happen, but it would be a, a pretty big surprise in my view. If Judah ended up playing basketball at Syracuse next season, so I think the most likely scenario is that he goes pro and bets on himself, but I think pretty close to 50-50 between that and him um, trying to get a huge NIL payout and, and go somewhere else. I know there's been rumors about possibly Georgetown trying to get him uh, to come there and give him a big NIL deal to do that to create some buzz uh, for Ed Cooley and company, but I, I think what's going to happen is sometime – you know, potentially this week, we're going to see him make an announcement on social media that says, um, I'm going to the draft process and also entering the, the transfer portal, not hiring an agent. So I'll be able to, you know, retain my college eligibility. I think he'll post something, he'll thank Syracuse and that'll be that. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't think there's, a, there's much chance at all that, that he's coming back. Uh, in terms of the additions from the portal, 
Uh, you know, Syracuse has been connected with, with a few different guys already in the portal. Uh, any in particular that you think have a better chance of landing here than others? Are there certain names that you have your eye on that we should have our eye on? Um, there's the kid from um, St. Joe's. I think Eric Reynolds is his name. He's he's kind of the, the guard that I'm keeping a closest eye on. And the main reason is he, I believe, was recruited there or has some sort of connection to Brendan Strawn. And so because of that connection, the fact that Syracuse wants a, a lead guard and the fact that he's pretty darn good. He averaged 17 points, three assists, three rebounds, shot 38% from three last year. Um, and he's about six, two, you know, he's a really good player comes with, um, you know, three years of significant playing experience and has improved every year that, that he's been in college. I think he's, he's someone that I'm, I'm taking a hard look at um, as keeping an eye on to see if, you know, I don't know if he's officially entered the portal yet, but he's someone that's been rumored to possibly be entering the portal. And if he does, um, definitely keeping an eye on him and, and what happens with him in Syracuse. But otherwise, you know, until someone actually visits or sets up a visit, it's kind of just – you know, reaching out to, to gauge interest. And it doesn't mean a ton. When you see reports of so-and-so has heard from the following schools, it could be anything from a coach reaching out and saying, hey, we want you, you need to come set up a visit and come let us give you a pitch as to why you should transfer here, to calling the kid's former AAU coach and saying, hey, is everything good with him? What's, what's going on? I wasn't expecting to see him in the portal. You know, you know, it could be anything and anything in between. So take those with a little bit of a grain of salt, but it does give you an idea as to what Syracuse is looking at, which is what we expected, a guard, a lead guard, and a big. Those are going to be their, their priority targets. Can you walk us through the process, too? When should we expect to start seeing the, the transfer portal, the, the kids actually transferring to other schools? Well, I think the fact that you've got postseason tournaments still going on right now kind of muddies it a little bit because some players that think that they should be recruited by some of these schools that are still playing in the tournament may decide that they want to wait and see if you know some of those schools will reach out after their seasons are over. Um, and and that's, I know some, some coaches have talked about it, and it's been talked about by media members as well. I think the opening of the transfer window needs to get pushed back until after the NCAA tournament. I think it it's, uh, puts teams in a bad spot to have the transfer window open right when postseason play is starting. It just, just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense from a, a logic standpoint. But that, that being said, I think after the the postseason is over, the NCAA tournament, et cetera, you'll start seeing a, a lot more activity in terms of visits, in terms of players announcing where they're transferring to. You're seeing a little bit now, but you'll see a lot more activity once uh, once that once the NCAA tournament's over. I think. Yeah, I'm with you. They got to change the date. It uh, it just makes too much sense for for too many reasons. They, they got they got to move it back a little bit. Uh, Mike, as always, appreciate the time. Anything else? Any any parting words uh, before we let you go today? Um, just uh, you know, kind of glossed over it a little bit when I was speaking earlier, but do expect that Syracuse football's recruiting class could be growing in the next twenty four to forty eight hours. And and we also have um, since I moved back over to twenty four seven Sports. If you go to CuseNation dot com, which is our website, we have a sixty percent off an annual subscription special going on. Um, for the next few days. So take advantage of that if you want to hop on board and get involved with our uh, premium content. All right, Mike. Great stuff as always. Uh, Thank you for the time. We'll talk again soon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, our good friend Mike McAllister joining us. With that, we'll hit a timeout. Full lines open the rest of the way if you want to check in. 315-437-7644. Back after this on ESPN Radio.